Hello everyone and welcome to another how to make a programming language video. Let's go to our hello project. In the previous video, we were making it possible to call our own functions. So we're able to define our own function and we're able to call it. Uh, so, uh, whoops. There we go, that works. And in this video, what we're gonna do is gonna, we we're gonna make it possible to pass arguments to our function uh, definition. So what I'm thinking we're gonna do here is uh, we're gonna make it possible to, let's just create another file here. So we're gonna call this uh, functions uh, two dot hello. And we want to be able to do something like this function do something do something and we want to be able to pass in an argument so we want to be able to define what kind of arguments our function are going to take in here so we can say something like uh, um, uh, x and we just want to print x Do something uh, hello now this we want this to print hello there if we're if this would work correctly uh, functions too so if we run this as you can see now it doesn't work it says unexpected token X it doesn't know what to do with this one here so let's first make it possible to uh, actually declare arguments like this. So the first thing we need to do is to, uh, in our ast.h, we need to uh, add some members to our function definition. So here's our function definition members for the ast node. We also need a list for the arguments to store the arguments. So we can do something like uh, uh, struct AST struct, which will be a list of pointers. We can call this function definition arguments or args. Args is smaller and better. And then we also want a size t function definition args size so that we can keep track of the size of the arguments basically. And now we also want to copy those and go into the AST.c and make sure to initialize them here. So in our function definition members here, we wanna do AST function definition args is equal to void pointer. Uh, AST function definition arg size is equal to zero. Okay. So now we have added the necessary members to the AST node for the function definition. Let's just uh, recompile here and see that it, it compiles. And it compiles, cool. Now what we wanna do is to actually parse these, uh, this argument here. And for the sake of the uh, video, let's actually make it take in two arguments and we're gonna print both x and y. Because in a perfect world, the function can take in multiple arguments, right? So now the parser still doesn't know what to do with this here. We're still seeing the unexpected token error. So what we need to do when we uh, uh, parse the function definition is to also parse whatever is in between the uh, the, the uh, parentheses. And we can sort of think of these as variables, right? So we can use the parse variable function here to parse what, whatever's in there. So what we can do here is uh, when we parse the function definition, we have the left parenthesis and the right parenthesis here. We are consuming those here. 
so here we are consuming the uh, function name and in between the consumption of the left parenthesis and the right parenthesis we actually want to have a while loop where we parse all the arguments that are inside so first what we need to do is to actually make sure that we can push these arguments to the AST here so what we need to do is allocate the, uh, the list that we define here. So we have this uh, function definition args list here. Now we need to make sure that we have some memory to push arguments to that one. So what we're gonna do is AST function definition args is equal to calloc one size of struct uh, AST struct pointer. So this means that now we can fit one AST struct in there. So what we can do is uh, um, parse a variable. So we can do ASTT arg is equal to parser parse variable. And we need to pass in the parser and the scope. Okay. And now we can do AST function definition args size plus equals one. So we're increasing the size of the argument list so that we can fit one more. And then we're gonna do AST function definition args uh, AST function definition arg size minus one uh, is equal to arg, okay? So we have successfully parsed the first argument here. Um, so we wanna keep parsing arguments until we run out of them. So what we're gonna do is uh, uh, while parser current token type is equal to token comma so while we have a comma we're actually going to keep doing this so while we have a comma we're going to keep parsing variables now there's a problem here we need to reallocate the list to fit in another variable here so what we need to do is do exactly what we did up there but we're going to use realloc instead so we're going to do realloc function uh, different uh, AST function definition can't spell today args and we want to reallocate to AST function definition args size times the size of struct AST struct Um, so there we go we're saying that the function definition args is going to be reallocated to the size of the args uh, times the size of uh, a struct pointer now we want to do this incremention of the size up here so that this is uh, reallocated with uh, an incremented size and then we're pushing the arg to the list again so let's compile this and see if it works we're having uh, some problems here um, first of all it's not called ASTT like that it should be a capital AST Let's try again. Uh, I spelled wrong on size. So it should be size like that. Recompile and it shouldn't be um, arrow size, it should be underscore size. There we go. 
recompile and it compiles. So what if we run our program here again now? So hello, examples, functions, two. We're getting unexpected token comma. And this is because I forgot to, uh, to consume the comma. So what we need to do is uh, before, uh, after we've parsed the first argument, we're going to do parser eat parser token comma. And uh, we're going to copy this to and put it. Uh, actually, we can put it in the start of the loop here. So while we have a comma, we're going to keep eating it or consuming it. Okay, let's recompile. Let's run it again. And now we're actually uh, parsing the function definition properly. So we managed to parse the arguments here. Cool. But now when we print them, the function doesn't know what's happening. Um, or it doesn't know what these variables are. Uh, so what exactly did we do here? Well, in our in our parser parse function definition, in between the consumption of the left parentheses and the right parentheses, we first are allocating some memory for our uh, argument list, and then we're parsing a variable, pushing it to that list, and then while we have a comma token. We are consuming a comma, and then we're parsing another uh, variable and pushing it to the list. So that's all we're doing. Now I can see that our messages here are kind of weird with the new lines in R. So if we go to the visitor and we search for undefined, let's just correct this a bit. Uh, the new line shouldn't be in there, it should be in there like so. Let's recompile again and run it. There we go. So now the problem is that when we are visiting the, uh, uh, let's see here, the um, variables inside of here, it doesn't really know what to do with them, or it doesn't know what X and Y is. So if we were to put B here, just to demonstrate that it's actually not these function calls that are, um, the main error here, um, at least I think so. Uh, or actually it is, that is the case, I mean. Um, these variables here are being parsed fine. We're actually not trying to access them at this point, but we are trying to access them within the function definition body here. And these two have no idea what these are because we need to push those into the scope somehow. And um, where we would do that is actually in the visitor. So when we are visiting a, uh, a function call, we actually, uh, after we have fetched the function definition, we need to push the arguments into that function definition body somehow. Now this will be, we will be doing this in the next part of, uh, in another video, because this is going to be a bit complicated. Okay. But at least right now we're able to parse the arguments that we put here. And the only problem now is that we, we can't access them because they are not, they haven't been defined in this scope yet. Um, but this is a good start. So in the next video, we are going, going to make it possible to actually access these variables. And uh, sorry if I'm being a little bit incoherent today. I'm a, I have a bit of a brain fog. Uh, I'm a bit tired, so. Um, <laughs> uh, but anyway, um, in the next video, we're going to make this work, OK? So uh, yeah. We managed to parse the arguments, and now the only problem is that we can't access them. But uh, we're going to make that work in the next video, okay? So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. And I'll put the uh, source code in the description and also the link to a previous video in the description. Have a good one.